Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this tutorial, I am going to explain a highly requested topic that is Principal Component Analysis or PCA. And I am going to explain it particularly in context of molecular dynamics simulation of protein. But before starting that, let's have an overview about the Principal Component Analysis. So PCA is a statistical method which is used to reduce the dimensionality of large data set, but keeping the key information intact. Or in simple word, we may say, PCA actually transforms the large data set into a simple one. Okay. And that's how it identifies the most significant correlated trends in the data. So let's take an example. Suppose this is the data of air pollution level of 10 countries over the last 5 years. So at first glance, this data look complex. But if you look carefully into the data, you will find in few countries, that means in India, Pakistan, China, Nigeria and Indonesia, the pollution level is gradually increasing over the year. So, it's the trend which is present within this data. These five countries are following similar trend. That means in all of them, pollution level is increasing. Similarly, for Germany, USA and Sweden, they are also following a trend. That means in them, pollution level is decreasing. But for Australia and Brazil, the pollution level is constant over the year. So, this is neutral data. And in PCA, these kind of data are excluded or removed to make the data set simple or small. But you can see here two main trends that means increase in pollution level and decrease in pollution level have been captured because these five countries have been clustered into a subset. And the three countries, Germany, USA and Sweden have been clustered in second principal component. So within this data set, there are two trends, okay, and or two principal components. In first principal component, five countries are included. In second principal component, three countries are included. Now, the major question is, what will be the first principal component and what will be the second principal component? The first principal component which contain five countries, okay, because we want to identify the major trend. So, if we extend this data, if we take 200 countries and if within 200 countries, 165 countries is following a particular trend, then this cluster will form the first principal component. But the question is how, how it is related with the MD simulation of protein. What actually we do in MD simulation, we want to identify the conformational change of protein molecule. Okay, so let's watch a video of MD simulation of a protein molecule and let's try to identify the principal motion. Okay, so this is the MD video of a protein molecule and you can see here the protein is present in a dynamic condition. That means is showing different kinds of motion or movement but simply just watching this video it's very difficult to identify the key conformational change okay so that's why we perform principal component analysis to identify the key conformational change within the protein molecule so let's watch another video this is the backbone of that protein and these are the backbone atoms that means carbon nitrogen Okay, and this is after principal component analysis and this conformational change is occurring along the first principal component. You can see here the atoms surrounding the active site pocket of that protein is showing a coordinated movement, a collective movement. The shape of the active site is gradually changing to accommodate the ligand. All these atoms are moving to a particular direction. That means their movement are correlated. And here 
these atoms are just like the countries which were showing a particular uh, trend okay so they are also showing a particular movement a specific movement to a particular direction now let's see how to perform this principal component analysis using gromax suppose this is a protein backbone containing 12 atoms a to l okay and suppose the four atom a b c d and this four atom from starting from i to l these four atoms they are showing motion and this e f g h they are not moving they are not showing any motion and their motions are correlated that means the motion of this eight atoms are correlated okay so they are showing this kind of movement now i want to capture this principal component that means this conformational change okay so for that a covariance matrix is generated you can see here total 12 atoms are there therefore covariance between each and every possible pair of atoms are calculated so we get this kind of table or covariance matrix so you can see the e a g h their motions are not correlated that means these values are zero but the covariance between these pair of atoms has some values that means they are correlated so this is a 12 into 12 covariance matrix where the motion of e a g h are not correlated and we are getting some kind of correlation between the between these atoms okay now all these atoms which are correlated they are clustered into a principal component so for generation of this covariance matrix and for identifying the cluster or that means the principal component in gromax we can use this command gmx cover that means covariance matrix as input we use the trajectory file that means md.xtc and md.tpr and we can also use index file so as output we get eigenvalue.xvg and eigenvalue.trr and this output file is the most important because it contains all the data about the movement of each and every atom it contains the principal component as well as the movement of each atom the degree of movement and the direction of movement okay you can also use this b to indicate the time frame that means suppose your simulation time is total 500 nanosecond and you want to perform pca only for last 100 nanosecond time okay so you start from the 400 nanosecond time that's why this flag tu nanosecond you are specifying the trajectory is present in nanosecond scale and you are starting pca from the 400 nanosecond so 400 to 500 100 nanosecond you are using for principal component analysis okay now using the gmx nih module of gromax we can extract the projection of the principal component okay then we can plot this projection suppose suppose we want to extract the first two principal components that's why i have specified here first one and last two that means first two principal components if you want to extract the data of third and fourth then you have to write here first three and last four okay and if you want to get the projection in 2d then you have to specify here 2d you have to mention here 2d and then you will get a 2d projection dot xvg which you can plot using qt test software and we can also visualize the conformational change along any principal component so if you want to visualize the conformational change along first principal component then separate commands are there so uh, several other uh, analysis can be performed using the data which are present in the eigenvector.trr file you can generate free energy landscape you can extract the 
extreme structure or to visualize the conformational change okay uh, so uh, in this tutorial i have just shown how to perform the pca and what is the basic concept of principal component analysis in next tutorial i will show you practically how to perform the principal component analysis how to plot the how to plot the projection using Q2Grace and how to generate free energy landscape and how to visualize the conformational change of protein along any principal component. So that's all for this tutorial. Thank you. Thank you for watching.